18, verse 24 says, This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. To my awesome church family, First Community Antioch Baptist Church, who I am blessed to be a part of, and to the listening audience, wherever you may be, God is still on the throne, and he is in full control. For his name is Emmanuel, meaning God with us. So regardless to what is taking place in this chaotic world, in which we live or in our individual lives. We can rejoice on today. For God has promised us in his word that he will never leave us, nor will he forsake us, but he'll be with us even until the end of the world. Oh, Father. 
God, Lord, we thank you right now, Lord God, for being in our midst, Lord, for you said what two or three are gathered together in your name, God, there you in the midst of us, Lord. Now, we lift up, Lord God, our speaker to you on today, Lord. Father, we're asking you, God, that you would use him, God. Father, let him decrease and, Lord, you increase and be seated on the throne of his heart, Lord. Let the word go forth, Father. Let the word go forth, Father, that it will fall on good ground and that it will bring forth fruit, some 30, 60, and 100 fold, Father, that we would not just be a hearer of the word, that we'll be a doer of the word as well. Now, we thank you for it. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done. Thank you for all that you're doing right now, God, here at First Community Antioch Baptist Church. And we thank you for what you will do. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. <laughs>
Good morning to all of our First Community Antioch Baptist Church family and to each of you who've joined us on this morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship experience. We can't wait to see what God is going to do at First Community Antioch Baptist Church on this Sunday morning because you see, we brought something to get something. We've been praying. We've been calling on the name of Jesus. We've been giving God thanks for what he's already done. And because he loves us with an everlasting love, and because he's a way out of no way, and because he's promised never to leave us or to forsake us, and because he's a doctor above all doctors, and because he's God, and he's God all by himself, and because he's never failed us yet, we have high expectations. And we welcome each of you to unite with us as we continue to give God all the praise all the glory and all the honor that he so rightfully deserves. What an awesome God we serve. We're so glad to have you here with us on today. And we invite you to tune in again next Sunday at this very same time. Thank you, God bless you, and stay strong in the Lord. Our guest minister for today is starting to feel a lot like family. And we're so grateful that God is allowing him to be with us again on today. Pastor Stephen D. Beckham is the husband of one wife, Laura. He holds a Bachelor of Science degree from Louisiana State University. And as a theological thinker, Pastor Beckham received a Master's and a Doctorate degree from the New Orleans Baptist Seminary. He loves God, family, and people. And he has a deep love specifically for the lost. Pastor Beckham has baptized hundreds of people. He has a joy for seeing people come to Christ. He is the proud pastor of Church of Life Fellowship in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He serves as moderator for the Baptist Association of Greater Baton Rouge, and he serves on the executive board at Louisiana College. He is second vice president of the Louisiana African American Fellowship and president of the Baton Rouge African American Fellowship. He is also affiliated with many other religious and civic organizations. Please join us as we welcome back Dr. Stephen D. Beckham. Thank you.
Fisher City is just to call your name. Oh, we thank you afresh for just another new day of mercy. One that we clearly don't deserve. Yet in spite of us, you look beyond our faults. And you came to see about our need. Oh God, you keep blessing us over and over again. God, as we hide ourselves in your love, because we know that there's no greater love on this side of heaven. Give us preaching power, preaching boldness, preaching clarity. God, we refuse to leave like we came. We need to hear from you. For as we stand in this place, we are very mindful, God, that we are mere mortal men made out of a house of flesh, we're feeble, fragile, and frail. Yet, God, not by power or might, but by your spirit, have your way in this place. I will give you glory, honor, and praise. It is in the matchless name of Jesus our Christ we pray. All who love God said, Amen. Thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. There is a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. We're grateful to be here one more time. For it's good when you come to a place and you want to come back. Some places you go to, you don't want to come back. It has much to do with the grounds that God has seated his spirit on. There is a word from the Lord coming from the gospel as is recorded by Luke. Luke chapter number 22. For our hearing, we will read just two verses. Luke 22. Began our reading with verse number 31, and we will conclude with verse number 32. The Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I prayed for thee, thy faith fell not. When thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. Just for our hearing one more time. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat, but I pray for you that your faith fail not. When thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. The grass wither, the flower fade, but the word of the Lord shall stand for ever. For the next few moments, with the solicitation of your prayers and help from God, we want to talk from the thought. We're not there yet. What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visit him? Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, crowned him with glory and honor. Bless the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. In this law doeth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. We're not there yet. One of the biggest mistakes that we can make as people of God is to live life with a halo over your head. 
many folk after they get saved, they forget the God of their salvation, and many of them will tell you they got it going on. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory that God gives us new mercy every day, which is a friendly reminder that we're not there yet. Mercy, something that God gives us to help us along the way. God really not giving us what we really deserve. The Bible said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, which suggests I've sinned, you've sinned, we've all sinned. Somebody said, I know because we're born in sin, shapen in iniquity. No, you still sin. The reason I know because there has been provision made for you in the epistle of John chapter number two, the Bible said, my little children, I would that you would not sin, but if you do, you don't have to worry about it because you have an advocate with the father who is Jesus the righteous. Christians sin just like sinners except Christians just sin less. Christians sin when they forbid themselves from being in the very will of God. A question was asked to me on one occasion, is it possible to be in the will and never sin? Yeah, it's possible but not probable because we're made out of a house of flesh and every now and then we want to revert back to our old appetites. Here in the text, we have a character by the name of Peter. Peter was no stranger to Jesus. Peter was thou when Jesus healed his mother-in-law. Peter was a part of Jesus' inner circle, Peter, James, and John. Peter, on one occasion, asked Jesus, Lord, we've left all for thee. What shall we have? In other words, like so many of us, Lord, I, I, I've left my lucrative business. What's in it for me? Jesus said, don't worry about it. Help me, somebody, if you can. Many of us want to get paid without going to work, or we want to know how things are going to end up without cultivating what God has given us to cultivate but Jesus said go into my vineyard and work and whatsoever is right don't worry about it I can pay you better than any other payday because the earth is the Lord the fullness thereof the world and day that dwell therein Peter was familiar with Jesus on one occasion Peter woke up and he saw something that he had never seen before. He saw Jesus in his glory. He saw Moses and Elijah. He said, Lord, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles. Peter, he would always get ahead of himself. And many times we need to look at the word because the word said we're supposed to be quick to hear and slow to speak. Many times if we think before we speak, Speak. Many times we would prefer not to speak because we would realize that we're speaking out of turn. Peter put his foot in his mouth and Jesus had to tell him, Peter, this is not about that. This is not about what you think. I have allowed you to see the manifestation of my glory. I gave you a glimpse of the past. I gave you a prophetic glimpse, but I also gave you a glimpse of my glory because I'm trying to tell you, Peter, that you need to prepare yourself. Uh, touch your neighbor, say, neighbor, you need to prepare yourself. Uh, you can't just get what God has for you if you never prepare yourself. We don't plan to fail. We just fail to plan because we don't prepare ourselves. Uh, uh, Peter, he wasn't a stranger. Jesus was walking on the water one day. And when Peter saw Jesus walking on the water, he said, Lord, I want to be just like you bid me to come out there where you are Peter began to put one foot in front of the other and how many of you know he began to defy the laws of gravity as long as he had his eyes on Jesus but when he took his eyes off Jesus like so many of us because we have that halo over our head we think that we've got where we are by ourselves in and of ourselves but I stop by to tell you like the apostle Paul but for the grace of God you are where you are. If it had not been for the Lord on your side. 
you wouldn't be where Peter, he would get ahead of himself. And I thank God for this text because this text helps me to understand, don't get ahead of your Jesus. He was preparing for the Passover. He had eaten supper with them for the last time. And they had the audacity, audacity and the mitigated gall to be fussing and fighting and contemplating over who is the greatest. You know, everybody wants to sit high, but if you're going to sit high, you've got to spend some quality time with Jesus. If you're going to sit high, you've got to know how to bend down low. Just a little talk with Jesus will make everything Listen, if you don't lose your place, the Bible said the Lord said. That's enough right there for me because there was a saying that came out several years ago that said, if E.F. Hutton said it, help me somebody, how many of you know the Lord said? And because the Lord said it, it doesn't matter how you feel about it because the Lord said it, his word is yea and amen. It has already been settled. Listen, Simon, Simon. Oh, I like that. I, I like that because Jesus had empowered Peter on one occasion when he asked Peter, what is street beat saying, Peter? What are they saying about me in the street? Peter said, one of them call you this and one of them call, well, I don't care what they say. I want to know what you say. See, a lot of us are bent and bent over on grandmamas and mamas religion, but you need to have a relationship relationship with the Lord on your own. You can't make it to heaven on big mama and mamas. Help me somebody if you can. Jesus on this occasion, although he had empowered Peter and Peter made the great confession that said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Now watch this. Jesus empowered him by calling him a rock, calling him from his old name to his new name. But now Jesus had reverted back to his old name. Be careful that after your salvation experience, that the Lord does not identify you by who you used to be. Help me, somebody. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Jesus, because he's God in Christ, reconciling the world back to himself. Jesus, because he was here before here, got here. Jesus, because he's the Alpha and Omega. Jesus, because he is God. He's omniscient. He knows everything. He knew that Peter was about to reach a detour in his life. Therefore, Peter put the horse, help me somebody, in the wrong place because the horse is supposed to be in front of the cart, not behind the cart. But Jesus knew that Peter was about to let him down. Therefore, he reverted back by calling Peter who he used to be careful wearing that halo over your head. We're not there yet. Even salvation is a process. We've been saved. We're being saved. We will be saved. Salvation. Any faith that fizzled before the finish had a flaw from the first. In other words, you can't lose it because it wasn't yours in the first place to give. If you don't have it when you see Jesus, you never had it in the first place because the Bible said you have been sealed until the day of redemption. But even salvation has to go through a process called sanctification. After you say, you mess up, you slip, you fall. God is constantly working on you. He's allowing you to go through a developmental process. See, most of us want everything that God has to offer, but we don't want to go through nothing. And you know glorification. 
one day when we won't look like we look now. Somebody said, well, the Bible said that you'll know him for, yeah, but you're going to have a new body. Paul said, though this house of this earthly tabernacle will one day be dissolved. I'm not worried about it because I have a building not made by help me somebody. I'm looking forward to that day because every now and then in this house, you don't feel like it sometime in this house. Sometimes you don't want to, but you got to help me somebody in this house. You have aches and pains, but on the other side, you don't have to worry about it because uh, on the other side, you're going to the land of no more, no more pain, no more heartache, no more headache. Every day will be Sunday. Help me, somebody, if you can. Simon, Simon. Now watch this. S behold or look. In other words, be careful because Satan desires to have you that he may sift you as wheat. He desired exotia. He demanded permission. Don't go to sleep on me because that's actually good news. If you belong to God, Satan has got to get permission from God before he even meddle. Help me somebody in your business. See, going through life every now and then, you run into some valleys. Going through life every now and then, you run into some potholes. And instead of you saying, why me, poor me, God is not looking for you to have a pity party. God is looking for you to have a praise party. God don't want you to be pessimistic. Praise is what you do when you're going through because you know that you're going through God's developmental process and many are the afflictions of the righteous but God will deliver them out of them all. You need to learn how to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding in all of your ways acknowledge him because God is going to direct your path why because the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord you don't have to worry about it if you see valley on your street just keep on moving you need to understand that it might get worse before it gets better but if you're going through God's developmental process you need to shout and instead of pout because you know if you're going through that God is up to something how many of you know on your way through there's a place called two in order to get two you've got to go through yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I don't have to fear no evil because God has never left the party there's no secret of what God can do what God has done for others God can do the same Satan wants to take you, but he's got to get permission. Don't, 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 don't go to sleep. Everybody likes to lift up the story of Job. When they lift up the story of Job, they always tell you how Job was upright. But how many of you know it had nothing to do with his uprightness. It had everything to do with Satan having to get permission from God to even wreak havoc in Job's life. It's in the thing. I didn't make it up. Satan, where are you going? To and fro, seeking whom I may. Have you considered? My servant, Job. In Sunday school, there's a fellow by the name of Pharaoh. You learned about him. He was the one who held God's people captive. But it was God himself that hardened Pharaoh's heart. Help me, somebody, if you can. Too many times we give the devil too much play. The devil cannot meddle in your business if you belong to the Lord unless he gets permission from God. Now, what, what, what? Satan 
wants to grind you in the powder. He wants to take you through the sifting process. The thief come but for to steal, kill, and destroy. John 10 and 10, but I've come that you might have life, life more abundantly. Quit quoting partial scriptures. What you talking about, preacher? Everybody going around putting Satan under their feet, saying if you resist the devil, he'll flee, then why is he wrecking so much havoc? Because you forgot the A part of the verse. The A part says submit to God. Help me somebody. You don't even have the ability to resist if you don't learn how to submit. What's wrong with so many people who call themselves Christians? They don't know nothing about submitting. They want to sit in the high seat. They want to run every other house outside of their own house. They want to run every other life outside of their own life. And they've never gone to God to submit. Listen, listen. But, oh, that's good news. There's a conjunction there which is begging for me to say something about it because Jesus is saying, because I've done the work on the front end, you don't have to worry about the back end because there's a but. But for the grace of God, I am what I, amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm fine. I was blind, but that wasn't for you all. That was for me. I'm just celebrating all by myself because I take a look back in my rearview mirror. I realize, but for the grace of God. I wouldn't be standing here today, but because of his grace, I realized that the sinless son of man became sin for man, that sinful men might become beloved sons of God. I'm in that number. I'm one of the sons, but in many had received him, to them gave he power to become sons and daughters of God, even to those that believe on his but. Listen what Jesus said. I pray for you. That your faith fell not. Now, notice, notice this. Jesus has given us a lesson in life because a lot of us are running around and we lose our mind. Jesus is telling us according to the text what's really important. Somebody praying for their marriage. Because their marriage is crumbling. Somebody's praying because COVID has allowed them to be released from their job. Somebody's praying and about to lose their mind because they lost a family member that was near and dear to them. Well, if you realize what's important and go back to what the word says if it's a marriage that's built on God by God then you're not even responsible for holding it together the Bible said those whom I put together are y'all in the house let no man put asunder if you worry uh, about that job maybe God allowed you to be released because he's got something better help me somebody if you can Quit pouting and learn how to shout. Know that God has got this thing in control. Isaiah said he sitteth on the circle of the earth. When I look at Paul's writing, Paul helps us to understand that God hadn't gone sleep at the wheel. You need to know that all things will work together for good because we love the Lord and are called according to his Therefore, we can count it 
Are y'all in the house? We can count it. Oh, I've lived through some stuff and I've learned how to count it all joy no matter what it looks like because the darkest dark is just before day there might be more months than money my change might be strange my money might be funny but God has got a breakthrough Jesus was trying to help Peter and I like that because uh, faith felt not. Mm. Uh, uh, eclipto, where we get the word eclipse from. What Jesus was telling Peter is because I prayed on the front end. Help me, somebody. You don't have to worry about the back end. And the reason why you don't have to worry about the back end has nothing to do with what you've done. The reason why you don't have to worry about the back end because the text suggests that I've got you covered. Help me, somebody. You know what happens when we have an eclipse. Help me if you can. Jesus is trying to tell you if you're in the house, all you've got to do is get up, honor me, put one foot in front of the other. You may not get there on your time parameter. But if you keep putting one foot in front of the other, you're going to get there on time. Help me, somebody. How many of you know you can't hurry God? You've just got to wait. You've got to trust him and give him time, no matter how long it takes. He's a God. You can't hurry, but you ain't got to wait. He might not come when you want him to come, but he's always Jesus said, Peter, you might falter. Somebody need to catch that. But you ain't going to fail. I need to say that again because somebody missed it. Uh, you ain't going to be a failure because you belong. You might falter. <clears throat> Peter, you going to falter because... In a few moments, you about to deny me. I ain't through, but I've got to quit. Uh, Peter, you about to deny that you even know who I am. Little girl is about to question you, and you're going to say, no, not me. And so many times, we act as if we get well. We get on our own. But I stop by to tell you, you're not there yet, but uh, keep on pressing. But where you're trying to get, you can't get there by yourself. You need the Lord's help. Paul said if you're going to get there, you've got to forget those things which are behind and learn how to press. You need to press toward the mark for the high calling which is only found in Christ Jesus. And uh, I stop by to tell somebody it's good news that you're saved and on your way to glory. But I stop by to tell you if you belong to the Lord, you go hang some Simon, Simon days. The Lord is gonna remind you not only who you are, but he's gonna remind you of who you used to be. But you don't need to run because he ain't trying to hurt you. He's trying to help you. He's trying to tell you you need to be aware because Satan is on your trail. 
But I've got news for you. You don't have to worry about it because he's on your trail means that you belong to me. The reason why he don't want what he already has. He want what belongs to me because I've come to turn the world upside down. Look at in the text and see your breakthrough. Jesus told Peter, when you get where you're trying to go, when you are converted, don't forget where you come from. I need to park there for a moment because many of us live in the house on the hill. Many of us have six-figured incomes. Many of us drank BMW, Mercedes, Cadillac, and Toyota. But I stopped by to tell you, you can't take that stuff with you. I've never seen you on your death day with the armor truck behind you. But the Bible said unto each has been given at least one gift. I need you to use your gift like you go use it, Peter. Just keep getting up in the morning. Don't forget about your fellow man. Realize, Peter, it ain't about you, but it's all about me. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins away. Rising, he justified me. Come here, Peter. Pentecost, over 3,000 souls will be saved, beside women and children, Peter, tell lost men that if they don't have me on their side, they're going to hell in a handbasket, but tell them if any man confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their that God has raised him from the grave. They can be saved. I can't speak for everybody else, but I'm glad I took the Lord in his word. I've been rising, I've been falling, sometimes up, sometimes down. Every now and then, I can feel Satan trying to take me out. I've seen the lightning flashing. I've heard the thunder roar. I've felt sin break of dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I've heard, I've heard, I've heard the voice of Jesus. Never to leave me, never to leave me alone. Goodbye, first Antioch, but I need to tell you on my way home. What can wash away your sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make you whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, how precious is that flow. Nothing but blood. You're not there yet. Just keep getting up in the morning. Soon or later, your time is going to come. When you get there, you'll be crossing over to the other side because God will say you've been faithful over a few things. Come on up a little bit higher. I'll make you rulers over many. 
Anybody love my Jesus? Anybody love the Lord? If you love him, you ought to say yeah, say yeah. God, I have no idea who's here. I have no idea who's listening. But I know you're here. And I know you're listening. You said by way of your word that if a man is going to be saved, the Holy Spirit will draw him. But you also said
is going to meet you. Many leave home never to return because it becomes so routine. God wants you to take him everywhere you go. But if you don't know him, you first got to get on his team. This may be your last opportunity. Please do something for me. Don't play Russian roulette with your life. It is not worth it. My last call.